Elon Musk's SpaceX launched its sixth Starship test flight to space earlier today, while President-elect Donald Trump watched on in person. Unlike the historic launch last month when the booster was caught by two robotic arms back at its launch pad, today it was directed to land in the Gulf of Mexico. The catch was called off just four minutes into the test flight for unspecified reasons and the booster hit the water three minutes later. Now let's get more on this. Eric Berger is the senior space editor at the technology and science news website Ars Technica and he joins us now from Houston, Texas. Eric, uh, we've got testing taking place right now as the Starship travels around Earth, uh, but no catch for the booster this time. No, they saw some data apparently on the booster that they didn't like. They haven't specified what it was, but you know they're they're constantly checking temperatures, pressures, and all these different parameters on the rocket. And obviously, with the big tower there, it's you know multi-billion-dollar launch complex. You don't want to take a chance unless you're pretty confident you're going to be able to catch the rocket safely. Yeah, and that all comes down to a command by the mission's flight director. That's right. Yeah, that that was it was probably an automated uh, abort. Honestly, mm -hmm. um, they didn't specify it, but the computer, if it saw something it didn't like uh, on board the rocket or in the ground software, would have called that off. So what tests are being carried out right now before the Starship returns? So the most important test uh, they just completed a couple minutes ago, actually, mm -hmm. it was they were attempting to relight one of the six Raptor engines on the Starship upper stage. And that's really important because if you're going to do orbital flights, you want to be able to bring Starship down in a controlled manner. So you want to be able to basically either bring it safely back to land or splash it down in the ocean. Um, and they successfully completed that Raptor relay and that proves that they can deorbit the vehicle basically on command. Yeah, live pictures coming in there now. What improvements have been made to hardware and software since the last test? Well, the, the main focus, I think, on the hardware improvements is they're really trying to uh, minimize the damage done to the heat shield on Starship. We can see the plasma um, on the screen right there really heating up. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's, it's these kinds of orbital reentries, it, 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 we're talking about thousands of degrees, um, very high pressures. And so, you know, we've seen in parts of the vehicle on fire, basically, on the last reentry. So they, they're making changes to the design of the vehicle and the heat shield tiles. To, to mitigate some of that. And they don't waste time between these tests. Now, the data that they gather today, it'll be put towards the next test flight. Do we know what they're looking to test on that one? Well, this is the last um, of this version of Starship. The first six flights have been basically Starship 1.0, and they're going to move to a, an upgraded version called Starship 2. 2.0. Um, and, and I think they're going to take a lot of their learnings um, and really put that into that next vehicle. Mm -hmm. And so the goal with this flight was to catch the rocket. They obviously didn't do that, but they did do the Raptor relight. And they're hoping to get a lot of data on the reentry that's coming up in just a few minutes. Yeah. And landing the Starship in the Indian Ocean, which is to come, that'll be during daylight hours. That means they can get more data on it, can't they? That's right. That's right. They want to basically understand the performance of the vehicle all the way down to the ground. They've obviously got sensors all over it. Um, and if, as they gain confidence, then they may move toward landing um, that Starship vehicle back on land. And they have proven they can recapture the booster. We've seen that even if it didn't happen on this attempt. Now, hmm. when will they be attempting to recapture the Starship? Well, that's really a great question, and we don't really know yet. Um, I think they're going to want to fly at least half a dozen more test missions before they really bring it back to land. And then they've got to make a decision. Do they want to try to catch it, the Starship, um, with one of those towers in Texas, or do they want to try to land it um, on land somewhere? And even places like Western Australia have been mooted as possible locations for that. But SpaceX hasn't specified what their plans are beyond sort of wanting to move as quickly as possible toward recovering Starships. And what are the ripple effects of what we're seeing here that can and will be applied to life on Earth, the innovation that we're going to see here? It's really hard to calculate or, or predict how this will change, but there will be humongous changes. You know, for the 60 plus years of spaceflight, you know, we've been constrained by cost, by mass, and by the volume, essentially, of, of what you can put inside a rocket. Um, Starship really changes the equations on all three of those. It's intended to be fully reusable. It has this huge payload capacity, and it has a very large payload fairing. Where you can put much larger satellites and spacecraft than, than ever before. So we're going to have to, they're going to have to build it, and then we'll really start to see the applications in the years ahead.